Hey guys, this is Claudio Giuliano here, and I am excited to finally be back with you guys. Today we are reviewing the 2021 M1 iPad Pro. If you have been following along with the channel over the years, you know we've been covering the iPad Pro going all the way back to 2015. Last year we covered the 2020 iPad Pro and that upgrade from the 2018 going to the 2020 really wasn't that significant of an upgrade. Whereas this year with the M1 iPad Pro we get a much more significant upgrade especially in the 12.9 having the Pro Display XDR. That M1 chip is giving us 50% more power in less than a year, which is really crazy. This M1 chip is a powerhouse. So we will be covering the iPad Pro from the standpoint of the creative professional. If you guys are brand new to the channel, tuning in for the first time, I am a graphic artist, digital illustrator, and large scale printer. I'm a shop owner of 14 years. I am also the art director and image processing developer for a pretty well-known creative software for the iOS platform and iPad, which is Art Studio Pro. I also make brushes. Obviously, I do a lot of video content creation here on the channel for you guys, and I also am a musician. So the way we review the tool links back to the things that I do for work, and that's going to be the core foundation of today's review. Now. The cool thing about this is even if you aren't a creator or artist, a lot of these things still deal with productivity as well. We have the iPad Pro coupled with the new White Magic keyboard, which looks excellent, especially with the silver variation. I also really love that the White Magic keyboard is great at hiding fingerprints and marks and things like that. So I definitely prefer the white over the black slash gray variation. When it comes to the iPad itself, design-wise, it's that same great design. But what we have going on with the 12.9 this year is it's slightly thicker and slightly heavier. Not really noticeable, doesn't change the experience at all. We still have the quad speaker system here, and on the 2021, the speakers sound louder and better than ever before. Great speaker system on this machine. And we still have the studio microphone array here. We have the same camera system as last year, but we do have a upgraded front-facing camera system, which has some pretty cool features built in it, like center stage, which kind of focuses on any face that's in the shot for FaceTime calls and video conferencing and things like that. So obviously the star of the show here is the new Pro Display XDR that the 12.9 gets. Now this is the new mini LED display technology, which means we are getting true blacks and it's very similar to an OLED panel, but it has benefits over OLED. And it is a gorgeous display when you combine that with the other same great technologies that the standard display has, like True Tone, the P3 wide color gamut, and ProMotion, which is the 120 hertz refresh rate. When you combine all of those technologies with the mini LED display technology, it really makes for a unique display experience. It's the combination of all those things with mini LED that makes this one of the best portable displays that you can find out there, especially a display of this size at 12.9 inches. So the display is beautiful to look at and beautiful to work on. Here I have an HDR video pulled up and that's when you can see this display go to a whole new level. When you're seeing that peak brightness and what it can do and the way the colors pop, it just looks gorgeous. I'm going to link this video in the description. If you have the new iPad Pro, check this video out. It looks crazy on it. Now, it's not gonna come through with me filming it like this. It's definitely something you have to see in person for yourself, but I can tell you, I've tested a lot of displays in my time, and this is one of the very best that I've ever had in-house. So, the display is awesome for content creation, for content consumption. It's an amazing display. Now, one thing that I noticed was the True Blacks of the mini LED make the 
feel larger than it is, even though it's not, it gives this sense that the display has more breathing room, more space. And that's what those true blacks do. And it's an effect that impacts creating on the device because the 12.9 becomes even more immersive. Now, don't get me wrong. The display technology in the 11 and the previous generation iPad Pros it's still very good technology for what it is. It shares a lot of the same things as well. It's just the mini LED is superior in a variety of different areas. And that's what I want to go into. How can this display impact the experience for us for creating, for example? And I want to break that down in a little bit more detail. So I want to show you guys this in relation to what I do as a graphic artist, digital illustrator, and large scale printer. One of the benefits of the mini LED and the local dimming zones and those true blacks that we get, especially when combined with the P3 wide color gamut, that means we're getting something much more accurate to what actually comes out of a printer, especially in the case of large scale print, which uses wide color gamut inks. And this is our brand new state of the art, large scale 64 inch print cut technology. This is Mamaki's highest level print technology. So we just did this upgrade for the shop and I love this printer. So I wanted to show you guys this and show you this in context with the screen. So right now I have a print that's being printed that I'm showing you, which is the piece that you're seeing on the screen of the M1 iPad Pro with the Pro Display. And as you can see here, those true blacks are coming through. And you can see that in comparison to the print that's coming out of the machine, how accurate that is, as well as the colors. Now, of course, we're gonna have differences in color here because you always do when you're printing, but also because we have different lighting scenarios and we're filming these things, so we're not gonna have pure accuracy. But I think this will give you a good idea of what I'm trying to convey to you about the display for a digital artist whose medium is print. So there's sort of been this controversy surrounding the display when it comes to something that's called bloom, which is this kind of glowing effect on things. And I wanted to break that down and see if that's an issue. And as you can see here, here is a pure black background and I did a piece all in white, like in the negative, uh, to see if I would get any of this glowing effect or bloom on any of the strokes. And I can tell you that did not happen. And as you can see here, there is nothing glowing on any of these strokes. So those photos that were out there were done in a very specific situation in a specific way. They were in a dark room with the screen at 100% brightness or near that or viewing HDR content, which automatically bumps the screen to that thousand nit brightness level. And they were looking at UI elements that kind of naturally glow on a dark background. And if you bump any screen to that brightness level in those situations, you would see the same thing. For example, here, I'm gonna bring in my OLED panel on my Note 10 Plus. You can see when it's bumped up to that level with these UI elements, you can see the glow. So the whole bloom thing is a non-issue. It's not something you have to worry about. So now we're going to get into that M1 performance and power, and we're gonna start working directly on the machine. So. There's something that I think a lot of people got backwards when it comes to the M1 chip. When the Mac got the M1 chip, the Mac got an iPad chip. And it's not the other way around. The iPad did not get a Mac chip because the M1 is a variation of the A series processor. And the iPad Pro has been blowing the MacBook Pro away when it comes to performance and power efficiency for years, since 2015, CPU performance, the iPad Pro has always blown the Mac away. So, you know, it's really not a question there. The M1 that is in this iPad Pro is just the natural evolution, the natural upgrade that the next iPad Pro would get. So those who were saying that Mac apps were gonna come to the iPad, those were very unrealistic expectations. Mac apps don't have to come to the iPad Pro. And in fact, the majority of iPad Pro users, the larger picture, they're not asking for that or thinking about that. 
those who have been using this platform for years, it's not something that they're thinking about. Would it be cool for Final Cut to come to the iPad Pro? Sure, I use it on the Mac, but is it necessary? Is it needed? No. Is the iPad handicapped because of that for video editing? No, because there are apps that go even further than Final Cut in certain areas, and I'll show you that a little bit later. Professionals like myself, the way we approach the iPad Pro is we know exactly what we want to do on it, and we know exactly how to do that with no limitations. It's about knowing the ins and outs of the system, and it's about embracing and learning the software that exists for it. So yes, the M1 chip is the most powerful chip Apple has ever made. And it's great that it's in the new iPad Pro. It extends its lifespan even longer, and it's a huge leap in performance that you definitely will notice if you are coming from a 2015 or a 2018 iPad Pro. It's also future-proof for the things that may come down the road. Now, you won't notice a huge leap in performance going from the A12Z of the 2020 to the M1 at this time. Now, as we uncover more things with iPad OS 15, and if we see deep in the system details that there are some things that can be harnessed for the M1, we will let you guys know with Art Studio Pro, of course. But at this time, we just don't know that. It's too early on. Even though WWDC has now passed and we are getting some really nice new features that are coming in the next iPad OS with multitasking and widgets and the app libraries. So there are solid updates coming. So we are getting more RAM with the M1 iPad Pros. The base models get 8 gigs and the higher end models, the one terabyte versions get 16 gigs. Now, more RAM is never a bad thing. But if you follow along with these things, we've kind of made some news with this. We were the first ones in Art Studio Pro to discover that apps at this time are only able to harness five gigabytes of that RAM. Now that's great for the eight gigs. That's about 500 megabytes more than last year's model with the six gigs of RAM. But that's not a great thing for the 16 gig. And we were hoping that with the introduction of the next iPad OS, we would have more RAM to play with for the 16 gig model. And at this time, it's just too early on for us to tell if we'll be able to harness more for the 16 gig unit. We'll have to look at the deep system details of this new release. So we will see and we will let you guys know. But having the extra RAM is still never a bad thing because we are getting more enhanced multitasking. For example, here, when I go to the app switcher, I have many large things open with many documents open within them and they are staying in the multitasking state for a long time, much longer than ever before. In fact, some of this stuff has been in here for days and it hasn't closed. So that is a good thing and that's a positive thing about the RAM. I also popped in a quick front-facing camera test and the front facing camera is actually pretty good. So as you can see here, performance is fluid and fast with the M1, and there are a lot of large scale documents open right now in Art Studio Pro, and I'm not seeing a single hiccup or stutter anywhere. So the M1 is gonna blast through anything that you need to do on this machine. So let's get into actually working on the M1 iPad Pro. So one thing here where we get impact is, of course, when we're making art, the true blacks make the display come to life in a way that is just awesome. Art pops off the screen. Here, as I was inking this piece here, kind of carving out of the black background, kind of like a scratch board, things look more true to life than ever before because of the new display technology. So if you are doing line and ink work, I think you're going to love this machine and love this display because not only does it pop the art off in this 3D way, but it also feels more realistic when you're doing it because you're getting that true inky black representation. Now, this stuff follows through for sketching and painting as well. So you are going to get a more true to life representation of let's say something like a scale of value going from dark to light and going from the darkest dark, which is black, to the lightest light, which is white. 
and the mini LED display achieves that full spectrum. It's now hitting the darkest darks and then it can bump all the way up to those high contrast whites because that's the nature of the LED technology. So drawing, sketching, painting, inking, it's all going to look great with the mini LED display. This is our new version. This is ArtStudio Pro 3.2. We have some really cool updates in this if you haven't checked it out yet. And right now, I am also previewing my next volume for the Real Paint Index. This is the Real Paint Index Volume 2. And I wanted to show you the performance on the M1 iPad Pro because these brushes are even more complex than the original volume. We are doing more of a hyper-realistic mimic of the paint with a lot of these brushes here. So I'm hoping to have the Real Paint Index Volume 2 out for you guys sometime this summer. So it's still being worked on, but I wanted to give you guys the first detailed look at the next volume. And I also wanted to show you how this performs on the new M1 iPad Pro. As you can see, we're getting that ultra fast blending. We're working at high resolution, large scale, and you can see there is not a stutter anywhere. And a lot of that is also due to the performance that you get with Art Studio Pro 3.2. I also wanted to show you guys some 3D D modeling and sculpting demos with the M1 iPad Pro. And what I noticed is it just felt great. It was extremely smooth, extremely fast. This is a great software that I've been using for a long time now, which is Forger. And it's an excellent modeling software, sculpting software for iOS. And it flies with the M1. It feels very good, very smooth, and remeshing, you know, regardless of what you're doing, how much detail you're adding to the sculpt, it did not slow down, it did not stutter. And this also goes back to the RAM because I was doing a lot of these tests going back and forth. Multitasking between different apps like Forger, Art Studio Pro, big stuff with big documents open, GarageBand, and also editing this review. And not once did I see the iPad slow down at all. It just plowed through all of the creative work that I was doing. So if you love sculpting and you haven't checked out Forger, definitely check it out. There's also another excellent software by a developer that I have used as web-based application for a long time. Uh, the developer of something called Sculpt GL now makes a iOS software and that is called Nomad Sculpt. I didn't have the time to pop that open today, but we're gonna talk about that in the future, in future videos. And the last thing I wanna touch on is video editing. Video editing on the iPad Pro is incredible. In fact, it's so good that I completely stopped using the other software that I used and other devices that I use for editing because editing on the iPad is such a pleasure. It's so fast, it's stutter free. There's really nothing like it. Now, everyone knows LumaFusion is one of the amazing editing softwares for the iPad Pro, but there is another one that no one really mentions, and that is VideoLeap. And VideoLeap is a full-featured editing software that in many areas goes even beyond Final Cut because we have deep color settings built in for color correction. We have deep motion graphics and animation settings built in. I mean, this software is awesome. And it also has a modern day user interface, one that conforms to the iPad, that is incredible for touch-based operation. It also works with the trackpad and it just has an incredible UI design. It's very intelligent UI and it's constantly expanding as well. It's always being updated and it's always growing and more features are always being added. So a lot of features that are not in LumaFusion, you can actually find in VideoLeap. So I suggest that if you are a hardcore video person, you should definitely check out VideoLeap. And that kind of segues me into our conclusion with the iPad Pro. So every year we've been getting a new iPad Pro every year or couple of years, we have consistently gotten these leaps in chip performance. Apple has been making 
leapfrogs in many areas when it comes to their chip design. And now the best chip, the M1, is in the iPad Pro, both models, the 11 and the 12.9. And there's still this small group of hardcore Mac people that I feel are not satisfied with the iPad Pro. And when I break it down, when I look at it, I feel like the iPad Pro might just not be the right tool for them. And I think the reason for that is they aren't willing to explore. They aren't willing to learn the true ins and outs of the platform. They also aren't willing to learn new software or step outside of their comfort zone and try something different. And a lot of times when someone claims or thinks that something can't be done on the iPad Pro, there usually is a solution for it and you actually usually can do the thing that they say can't be done. So in most of the instances where someone got an iPad Pro watching one of the videos over the years that has emailed me or messaged me and said, you know, I got the iPad Pro when I watched your video and I'm trying to do this specific thing, but I can't figure out how to do it and I don't think the system does it. They think that it's a thing where the system just simply does not do what they want. And then I analyze that and I show them how it's done and they go, wow, I never knew you could do that. And it's because there's a lot of these deep kind of hidden system things in iOS that are not prevalent or at the forefront and they're also not very obvious in the way you achieve them. It's something you have to discover and it's something you discover by just using the iPad for years. It's a thing where I know the system so well because I've been using this thing since 2010 and I've been really using this thing. So there's so many situations where people think something can't be done on the iPad Pro, but it actually can. So I think Apple needs to come in and create some videos or create a new guide showing these deeper system things. So in the end, what can we conclude about the M1 iPad Pro, especially in the case of the 12.9? Well, for me, this is the first year that I am fully embracing the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, the first year that I fully love it. That mini LED display technology makes big impact for me and for what I do. Do. And the effect of the True Blacks making the screen feel larger and more immersive than ever before is the selling point for me. So if you have the 2020 iPad Pro, I don't feel like it's necessary for you to run out and upgrade to this 2021 iPad Pro. I do think if you see this screen in person, you will fall in love with it, but you still have a very powerful iPad Pro with a great display that shares a lot of the same display technologies as well. The M1 iPad Pro does get my recommendation, especially if you are upgrading from an older generation iPad Pro, like a 2015 or the 2018, you'll definitely see and feel those improvements. And that is going to wrap up today's review of the M1 iPad Pro. If you guys like this video, it would be great if you can drop a comment, if you can share it with a friend. It would be great if you can give it a thumbs up. And most of all, it would be best if you subscribe. We will be back soon. Have a great day.